Hey guys, today we're going to do an overview of my watch collection and a new case that I bought for them. So this is the Decora Bay watch case, which I bought on Amazon for about 80 bucks Canadian, uh, which is about 60 bucks US, I guess. Um, I really am impressed with this case because, uh, I mean, it's just, it's absolutely solid. I mean, just look at it. It's like solid, like walnut wood here, and uh, it's very hefty. Um, so it's a very, very doable case. Let me just look at it, right? Really beautiful looking case right here. So yeah, this is a very, um, well, it's, it's, it's definitely one of the more expensive watch cases out there. Uh, it holds eight watches and along with a, a bunch of your other jewelry, like earrings or rings or necklaces, bracelets or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I really like this case. It's the, the Cora Bay watch case you'll find on Amazon. So yeah, I just want to talk about that first and then you can see the quality construction down uh, even when you open it inside the case as well. Very, very durable and sturdy. Uh, so yeah, this spot is for your uh, other types of jewelry, your rings and bracelets, um, yeah, necklaces or whatever. And then it fits eight watches here. So let's focus on the watches here uh, because as a man, watches are pretty much uh, the only major jewelry that we have to distinguish ourselves. Women have all this other jewelry, right? Uh, for guys, we just have watches. <laughs> so let's talk about watches. All right, so I changed up the angle a little bit. Um, so I angled these watches up so you guys don't have to see the glare from my light. Um, maybe you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's too much glare. You can't really see anything. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about all my watches. Um, I have eight watches here currently in my collection and all my Swiss watches are down at the bottom and then I have some German watches and uh, Chinese watches up at top here. Uh, and go through each one, I'm going to talk a little bit about why I have it, um, the price, and um, the story behind it. Okay, so let's start from the, the bottom left right here. So this bottom row is all Swiss watches. Um, this is the Oris GMT Limited Edition. This is actually the first luxury watch that I bought. Uh, previously, I've had other watches, but they're mostly budget watches like the Seiko 5, Seiko Kinetic, Orient Sun and Moon. Those are all kind of budget um, entry-level watches, which are all nice. I mean, Seiko and Orient are, are well known for having uh, good value watches. But then uh, in 2018, I wanted to move up into something a little bit more fancier and decided to get into luxury watches. And uh, here we have the first luxury watch I bought and still the most expensive watch in this collection. This is the Oris GMT Limited Edition, Greenwich Mean Time Limited Edition. And I bought it for $2,000. That's the MSRP price, I think. And uh, very, very expensive. But what I do like about this watch, why I bought it, is the uh, GMT complication here is done a little bit differently than most GMT um, complications I've done. So usually, like you have uh, GMT like complications, the way they're done is ro usually they follow the Rolex style, which is they have like a GMT hand here, and then they have um, you know alternate numbers here, like maybe 24, um, yeah, up to 24 to uh, signify the other time zone. But I don't really like that style. I think having another hand here just kind of makes it more complicated. And I, I like to have my watches a little bit more minimalistic. So uh, I like how Oris did it here. So instead of having like a GMT hand, it has like a sub dial here. So this little globe icon uh, with the this little black square here that's signifying PM. If it's light here, it signifies AM. So there, it can tell you AM PM indicator just by that little window. And then it has a globe icon. And this is the... Uh, yeah, this is basically a play on their, their GMT model. And this limited edition model has this globe icon in it. And this is going to be the second um, home time zone, I would say. And uh, it has a second subdial here. So no seconds hand has a subdial instead, which is fun because uh, it doesn't clutter up the, uh, the dial at all. So only two hands on the dial, and yet you have a GMT complication. And it has a date window down at the bottom here. So... Yeah, it has these two pushers on the side here. This will be used to actually set the, uh, the current time and then you can use the traditional crown to set the home time. So yeah, I think this is a pretty nice watch. Stainless steel, of course. And look at the uh, back here. There's an engraving. There's no open window case back here. It is an engraving of Sir Sanford Fleming who uh, came up with the concept of Greenwich Mean Time and who's a Canadian, by the way. And uh, yeah, I think this is fine. I mean, I probably, for limited edition watches, it's probably nicer to have an engraving instead of uh, just an open case back like most 
mechanical watches do, or luxury watches. Um, I think that's totally fine. And uh, yeah, only a thousand pieces made. So that's part of the reason that's contributing to the high price for the movement. It uses a modified Salita SW200, I believe. And uh, stainless steel bracelet, of course. I usually use this watch when I'm traveling because, you know, it's a GMT watch. So um, when I'm traveling to Korea, when I was in Korea um, the past few years, last time I was there, right, when I could travel there, um, I mostly used the Oris. So that's the story behind that one. Next watch is the Frederick Constant Slimline Moon Phase, which is the second watch, second luxury watch that I bought. Um, retails for, I think, $2,500, $3,000, I would say, uh, because this watch uses uh, manufacturer movement, which means it uses FC's own movement behind it. So this is an in-house movement. It's not using any sort of outsourced movement. Uh, no ETA, no Salida, no voucher here. It's using an FC movement. That's part of the reason why MSRP is 3,000 bucks, but I got it on uh, online for 1,300. That's a great thing about FC's, uh, Frederick Constance, is that you can often find them online for such great deals. And I think, in my opinion, Frederick Constant is one of the best makers of affordable, like dressy looking watches. Like around the $1,000, $2,000 range, I mean, there's some good Hamiltons and um, Bomb Mercier, maybe some of the cheaper Bomb Merciers may look good. But for me, I think FC's make some of the best dress uh, watches out there for this price. So uh, I really like the moon face, especially on uh, FC's. You can see the, the blue dial here, I really like FC's blue dial and the moon face complication. Um, the way that FC did this is, is very beautiful. And the date here uh, as well, very minimalistic. Uh, I, I really love how they did that. Uh, Roman numerals around the dial. And I actually uh, originally came with the leather strap, but I replaced it with this Milanese loop um, to make it a little bit less formal, a little bit more for everyday wear. And it has a onion crown here at the back. Probably the most decorated movement I've ever seen on my, I mean, out of all the, the watches in my collection, the FC probably has the most decorated movement on the back here. Um, so yeah, you can see how, uh, how nice that looks, right? So FC does a really wonderful job here on their own movement, a lot of decorations here. So yeah, probably the most decorated movement out of all, any of the watches I have in my collection. And it's not the most expensive, <laughs> for sure. Um, might not even be the second or third most expensive watch in, in my collection. I uh, got it for 1300 though. Now that price for our, for an in-house movement, I think it's a, it's a really good value, actually. So that's why when I did my watch ranks, my watch ranking, I put FC quite high because even though their MSRPs are not that great, you can often find them online for much, much cheaper. Now that price is kind of a steal. So that's it, that's my FC. Uh, I can use this watch for Dressy occasions, I can use it for everyday occasions as well because I swapped it with the, the Milanese loop. So that's it. Really like how this watch looks. Um, next one, we have a watch I mostly mainly use as my dress watch. And I bought this one. This is MSRP $2,000. I bought it for $1,500. This is the Raymond Whale Beatles Let It Be limited edition watch. Uh, limited to 3,000 pieces. So it's not quite as limited as my Oris, but uh, still limited. Um, and yeah, this is a very nice dress piece. Uh, I use it as my main dress watch. Uh, reason why is because, well, the size is not that big. It's uh, 39 millimeter. So the size is pretty nice. Um, not very big. And uh, you can see this, the dial here is pretty nice. I mean, it is the Beatles, it says the Beatles on it, but you don't have to be a Beatles fan to appreciate it. That's what I like about it. Uh, this is the fourth and final collaboration Raymond Whale had with the Beatles. And um, I think this one is the best looking for sure. Um, I mean, it's not as intrusive looking as the other Beatles watches, and I just like this design better. It's a, it's a skeleton, semi-skeleton design, it's like a partial skeleton, I guess. And um, it's done in the shape of the UK, because that's where the Beatles are from, uh, so that's unique. And it has the, uh, an anthracite dial, or grey dial, with gold accents around it. So, all in all, just a really nice, classy looking uh, watch, and I can use it for a dress watch. It comes with a leather strap, of course. And then at the back here, you can see has the Beatles uh, kind of stamped, imprinted on there. But even behind it, you can see that the, that the movement is pretty decently decorated. Yeah, and I think this is a, maybe a modified ETA movement here. Raymond Will, I, I mean, they do have their own in-house movements, but probably not, not at this price. So, yeah, this is the original leather strap. So, yeah, 
Um, I like this watch. Uh, it just has a nice dress watch. Yeah, not that big and uh, looks very classy. So, I think this watch, I actually got it for 1400 yeah, not 1500 Yeah, MSRP, 2000 bucks. got it for 1400 Yeah, so definitely not inexpensive, but it's not um, crazy expensive either. All right, um, so last out of my Swiss watches, I have the Belova. Uh, this is a Joseph Belova Banker. And um, Belova is an American brand. It's a very storied American brand. Um, but for this, this is one of their higher end watches. So it's actually got a, an ETM movement in it, I believe. Uh, so it's actually, yeah, Swiss made. Um, what I like about this watch is the Tonneau shape, uh, very vintage. It's, it's got a lot of vintage style to it. It's got a Tonneau shape and it's got the Art Deco type Arabic numerals on it, just Art Deco type of design, um, date, you know, window right there. Uh, actually, a lot of people probably would have liked this without the date window. I think I probably would have preferred it without the date window too. But anyways, I have that here. And um, yeah, this very nice vintage looking style. Um, if you want a watch that looks like it came from the 20s and 30s, I think uh, they did a really nice job here. Joseph Belova Banker, uh, stainless steel. Um, it's a Belova, so um, generally these watches do not go for very high. Um, MSRP of this one's not even very high, it's like a thousand bucks, but I got it online for 650 because Belovas generally do not sell for very high online uh, on the secondary market. So you can get one of these Swiss made Belova watches actually for a pretty nice deal. Um, it's just because Belova, usually people think of Belova and they think of cheap quartz watches and stuff, but um, their high end watches are actually quite nice, like this one. And I guess one thing is a small crown. I wish this crown was a little bit bigger. It's really small. But anyways, if you look at the back here, and I believe this is a an ETA, might be a Salita movement. Um, but yeah, this is a, got like a half exhibition case back right here. And uh, it is limited edition. So this is limited to 350 pieces, which really is the most limited out of all my uh, watches. <laughs> Only 350 really isn't a lot. Um, but yeah, I like this movement here. So it's, um, it's not like the most decorated movement or anything, but I mean for 650 bucks getting like a Swiss made watch uh, with the ETA movement is, is actually quite nice. It's a pretty good value. So anyways, um, I, I can wear this for dress occasions, I can wear this for casual occasions because of the stainless steel. Um, and the vintage design is what it really drew me to this watch, the Art Deco vintage design. So yeah, the Joseph Belova Banker. All right, so that's all my Swiss watches, and uh, next we have um, some German watches here and a Chinese watch. So let's go from the upper left here. All right, so this is the Yunhan's Meister calendar. Um, out of all my watches, I probably wear this one the most, uh, just because it's it's a really nice everyday watch. Um, this is the second most expensive watch in my collection. The third one that I bought, the second most expensive in my collection. This is. 15, no, $1,600. I bought this for $1,600 US. And uh, yeah, that makes it the second most expensive. Um, what I really like about this watch, um, it's got vintage styling, it's very minimalistic. Uh, Yunhan's, right, a lot of German brands, but uh, Yunhan's probably more so than, than others. Um, they're known for their minimalistic functional design. Uh, for this one, I like the fact that um, because it's, some, it's a calendar watch, so it's got a lot of complications. So it's got uh, the month right here, and it's got the day right here, uh, both in small, these concave windows. And, um, oh sorry, I got the mix up day here and month here. Yep, in uh, small concave windows. And you got, it's got the same kind of uh, complication that the Frederick Constant has. So it's got the moon phase, which isn't quite as nice as the FC moon phase, but it's there. And it's got the day kind of around it. Um, again, I probably prefer the FC when it comes to that, but uh, the, F the Yunhans does put a lot here. I mean, the, the fact that they put four complications here in such a small amount of space and still manages to keep so much area in the dial is pretty amazing to me. So I think the main reason I got this is it looks really nice. I like watches that are super simple, minimalistic, and functional. And this watch manages to have four complications and still keep the watch very clean looking. So that's what I like about it. Um, so yeah, gray dial. Uh, the vintage look is because Yunhan still uses plexiglass. 
They don't use Sapphire. You could get this with Sapphire if you want to pay extra, but um, it comes with the plexiglass right now, and that's a very vintage design because it's domed. So you can see it's a domed glass, plexiglass. Um, doesn't handle scratches as well as Sapphire, but, but it's a more traditional vintage looking uh, watch because of that because that's how watches used to be like they used to use plexiglass I guess and uh, That's what you know has continues to do and then if you look at the back here is nothing I would say too special going on the back. It's definitely not as decorated as the FC uh, For German watches I also find that their decorations. They don't really match up to the Swiss um, The great this the thing about German watches that they're in general They're a little bit more affordable than Swiss watches are and they're very well finished um, so the quality and reliability of German watches is pretty nice, uh, but you're not going to find like crazy decorated movements like you will on a Swiss watch. And this one is a lot of German watches, except for Nomos, most German watches don't have their own movements, right? Um, they tend to use outsourced movements. I think this is an ETA movement. So Yunha is no exception. They use ETA movements in their watches. Um, so I think this is just uh, a modified ETA movement. So yeah, nothing too special with the movement, but what I do like about it is just, um, yeah, the minimalistic clean design, but still managing to be very, very functional. And I use this as probably my main everyday watch. Like here, we're just going outside and, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm just going outside to hang out with somebody. I'll probably choose this watch because just overall very functional. Um, yeah, very useful. So that's the Yunhans. And then next up, I have the Namos Tetra. So this watch um, I got because it's a very minimalistic looking watch, like the Yunhans, except uh, this one can be used for more dressy occasions because it's so small and um, no extra complications or anything. It's just the dial and uh, seconds subdial, and that's really it. And that's what Namos is known for. And um, yeah, just very simple, very very simple Bauhaus design. Um, square right it's just perfectly square <laughs> it's uh, not even to no shape or anything just perfectly square and uh, um, because of its small size you can use it um, pretty much yeah most occasions but probably I would use it in more dressy occasions but I can use it every day too because of the uh, nylon strap so I can use it in other situations as well so I originally had a leather strap but I replaced it and um, yeah this is uh, basically what Nomos is right it's uh, they're known for making very minimalistic Bauhaus design um, and show you this is a manual line caliber movement. It is Nomos's own movement. Nomos, unlike other German companies, they um, they have in-house movements. So you look at the back here, this is their alpha caliber movement. So you can wind this up and you can see this movement in action. So the three-quarter plate, typical of Glashude designs. So yeah, um, I guess that's what I uh, like about this watch, is uh, just very, very minimalistic. Simple, clean design, uses own movement. Um, as for price, it's uh, I got this for around 1300 so more, less than the Yunhans. Yeah, it's uh, not as expensive as the Yunhans for me. I think it retails for more than 2000 though, but uh, that's where I, price I got it for on the secondary market. Um, yeah, it's very nice, small watch good for dress occasions all right next up I have the least I watch I got fairly recently this is a Totima Flieger um, or Grand Flieger automatic and uh, I got this watch because I think I was missing like a I don't have a pilot watch I don't have a tool watch in my collection as you can see um, I have dress watches I have um, more functional watches right watches more focused on the dressy style I don't have watches more focused on um, you know, a lot of people like diver watches and pilot watches. I don't have any of those tool kind of watches. Finally, I decided to get a pilot watch. So this is the Totima Flieger. Totima is a German company not as well known, I would say, overall as Junhans or Nomos, um, at least not in America, uh, probably more well known in Europe. Uh, but they, they produce top notch uh, chronogra pilot chronographs, pilot watches, um, and things like that. I say for tool watches, um, Totima is actually really nice for that. Uh, I think they compete with uh, the best Stowers and Sins and Lacos, um, Mule Glashudes. Uh, they compete with all those watches, I think, in terms of quality. Um, this watch uh, is $1,500 I got it for, so slightly cheaper than the Yunhans, not as cheap as the Nomos. 
um, in terms of what I paid for it. In terms of MSRP, I think this watch competes with Namos and Johans pretty well. Um, just I got it for, yeah, in between those prices. Um, it originally came with a leather strap. I changed it out to a Milanese loop because I wanted this to be more versatile. Um, leather strap, of course, um, is not going to be as versatile. Uh, you can't really use it in really rugged conditions, right? But the Milanese I can. Uh, you can look at the movement here. Like most German watches, um, this one does not use its own movement. Instead, it uses an ETA movement, just like the Junhans. It's decorated uh, a little bit more than Junhans, I would say. So, see, they put like a gold seal on the rotor here. So, yeah, this is a... Um, yeah, Totima's movement is, uh, they use like modified yeah, ETA movement here, so you can see. Yeah, so you can see the movement here is um, it's not quite as decorated as the Nomos, but it's a little bit more decorated than the Yunhans, I'd say. So, yeah, it's a modified ETA movement uh, that Totima uses. So, yeah, overall, um, I'm satisfied with the quality of this watch. I think this is my, this is my main tool watch uh, that I use. Um, so I would use this uh, for more maybe like activity occasions um, like when I'm going outside and hiking or something like that or biking probably pick up this watch uh, anything I'm doing that with activities probably I'll use this one uh, it's for more maybe more rugged conditions I'm definitely can't really bring my Yunhans to something like that because the domed crystal is a little bit more susceptible to uh, wear and tear uh, but the uh, Totima right of course is a sapphire can handle that and uh, it's got a green dial it's a degrade dial um, it's got a date window at the bottom here it's fairly functional um, so yeah simple clean design like most German watches so that's why I got the Tutima all right uh, last but not least I have a very unique looking watch here this is the Atawak Ettore Light. Um, this is a Chinese micro brand that just started a few years ago and they take designs that are pretty wacky and fun and uh, creative. I think this one, uh, the Ettore line, I think they took some inspiration from Erwerk, which is a very high-end luxury German or Swiss brand. Um, so yeah, this is a, uh, except this is much, much cheaper. So believe it or not, out of all my watches, um, maybe actually <laughs> predictably the Chinese one is going to be the, the cheapest but still with this kind of design I mean I paid $500 for this this is the cheapest watch out of my collection pretty crazy I got this on a Black Friday sale MSRP is probably around 800 so even the MSRP still isn't that much um, but yeah I got this on sale for only 500 bucks making it by far the cheapest out of all my watches here um, well actually maybe the Belova yeah so a little bit cheaper than the Belova so um, but for the design I mean this is uh, this is a crazy design it's a retrograde design um, this is the hours this is the minutes and the seconds will be moving here uh, the crown is actually on the left side which makes it a little bit annoying to adjust uh, but yeah leather band very very unique looking watch and uh, even the back let me take a look here So you take a look at the back here, um, pretty cool actually, uh, it's, it's a modified Miyota movement. So they use a Japanese Miyota movement here but it's been heavily modified. So yeah, I think this is, this is pretty cool. And there, I think you can see the dial going right there. Yeah, very very cool looking watch. Um, only thing is it's, it's huge, so when you wear it on your wrist, I mean, you're going to get a lot of attention. So this is a watch I don't wear all too often. It's like when I want to get some attention I can wear it uh, it's not a watch I would wear for like long periods of the day right um, I'd say out of all my watches my most comfortable watch to wear is probably the Raymond Whale just a super small fit size and the Namos yeah both of these watches are super small super light uh, so the Raymond Whale and the Namos probably the easiest to wear and then um, this watch the Atawak is yeah, this is a watch that's very heavy on the wrist and um, not that easy to wear, so don't wear it that often. Uh, only for, yeah, sometimes if I want to go outside, I want to get some more looks or attention, I can wear it. Um, but yeah, it's not definitely not something I would wear like every day. So that's it, guys.
that's my watch collection. Um, the Atawak Atori Lite. Uh, this is my cheapest watch in collection. Very, very unique. The, the, the Totima Flieger. Um, this is a watch I would use maybe for more rugged activities and stuff like that. Um, it's a nice tool watch. The Namos Glashude Tetra. It's a nice small dress watch. Um, and then the Yunha's Meister Calendar. Uh, this one is a nice everyday watch, very, very functional design. The Belova, uh, Joseph Belova Banker. It's a nice vintage design. Uh, I can wear it for, um, yeah, either dressy or everyday occasions. Then the Raymond Whale Beatles, I usually wear for dressy occasions as well. Um, probably my first choice and almost probably second for that. Um, then the FC Slimline Moonface. Uh, another watch I can wear either for dressy or for everyday occasions and then the Oris GMT a watch I wear for uh, Traveling so that's it guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed a little rundown of my watch collection and um, Let me know if you guys have any questions about any of these watches and the case as well the Decora Bay case So let me know as always. Thanks for watching